program just a few days ago um, a young man by the name Colade Johnson was allegedly killed by a stray bullet while watching um, a football match at a viewing center and that stray bullet came from um, one of the guns of the men of the uh, special anti robbery squad although the police have now said it's a special anti-cultism squad um, but it doesn't change the fact that it came from um, one of the men of the Nigerian police and that has sparked a renewed uh, uh, advocacy against ending the special anti robbery squad and ending police brutality and this morning we're looking at um, police brutality the case of Kolade Johnson and to help us have this conversation we have um, someone who is into youth advocacy he, he calls himself a tri tricycle operator but I think that you know he goes beyond that because he's a youth advocate and he has a story to tell as well he's a day bio a bio me and also we have the co-founder of Mushi to the world um, an advocacy group that focuses on the building, building the perception of Mushi he is showing me or luckily and this morning we're looking at that co controversy on police brutality. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, when you heard this new case of um, Colade Johnson, I just, I just want to hear, I don't, I don't know what, what went through your mind. What was the first thought you had? Um, Adebayo, let, let's hear from you first. Um, um, let me say my, let me just brief a little. My mom was a victim mm. of this um, MSARS. That was um, Miss Kudrata, the late Kudrata Adebayo. Blessed memory. She sells um, what I am around to that was two years ago, that was April 4. Two years ago, she was just on her own business. I went to a visitor that morning, that incident. Less than two hours, I had a gunshot. The police, the cells have shot my mom. So every year, anytime I see answers, I just feel not again. So when I had this case on Sunday, I said, how many days? Just like three or four days to another two years of my mom being shot by SARS. And we've been ranting, shouting for to answers reform police and nothing has been done so i felt i know what and uh, the family of colade johnson would have been feeling right now because i was once in that show so i can I know how the family will be at the present moment even i know how what i went through to the moment even academically emotionally mentally what he has it really affected me now this is a young man of my age or young person just starting up his life life cut short by the reckless anti uh, courtism or anti whatever they call themselves and i'm in the issue nothing has been done to the case so what are they doing on this young man that's just the issue our judicial system is very slow um i, I your story is a very sad one and i it just sort of makes the whole conversation then brings a different light to the conversation because you are also a victim right. of the whole um, um police brutality that nigerians are talking about um from what you said your mom was shot you know um by sas a man of uh, the special anti robbery squad was it deliberate was it a stray bullet what happened in that situation it's a, it's a, it wasn't deliberate a stray bullet but up to now the nigerian police force have not taken on the blame they will come up with different cases it was um a shot by someone else after we had the autopsy we had many evidence a bullet proof and the church said that this bullet was from your whole uh, from your officers nothing has been done on the case um were there on um some sort of raid at, on that day what were they doing in that area no. on that day no 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 what we had was there was a um, one of these yahoo guys having a birthday or naming ceremony mm. so the toll gate is a busy area so the police they've mounted the naming ceremony venue they now stop at the a railway crossing they know that some of his colleagues will come in to celebrate with him so they started from there since morning they've been there exhausting people harassing people with dreadlock uh, with a uh, laptop bag or whatever whatever if you understand so the incident the, there was a guy that was trying to find to try to escape when they was trying to hold him so the guy was running on his zigzag direction that was where they were shooting along with him and he just met my mom where she was selling and to this very moment you say that you know there has been no word from uh, the nigerian police as to the way forward no 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 even we personally i wrote to the president governor dropped it at the state office governor's office allowed some myself copied um civic engagement office of civic engagement till now nothing has been done even our lawyers just empowered international lawyers are also on the case 
wrote to the CP, the former CP Oshini, came visiting us that same during the incident and promised to do something more reasonable. Even visited our lawyer visited. He said we'll do something. Till now nothing has been done. All right, um, um, Shirley, what, what do you make of all of this situation where, um, whether by stray bullets or deliberate or, or, um, or a direct offense to Nigerians, where uh, Nigerians are saying that they have been brutalized, harass, harassed, and oppressed by men of the Nigerian police force, and especially those on the on, on that side? What do you make of that situation? Uh, well, it saddens to, to understand that the, the person that's supposed to protect you is one that has been triggered that has been trigger happy by shooting that that gun in his hand and what i understand is when poverty poverty is the main cause when you empower poverty the police form the, the reform the reform police be which is supposed to enact and not the abuse that is supposed to see to the welfare of the police is not being affected so what boils down is we the citizen the common man the police has to go down an extortion to extort us. And coming back to my community motion, I understand the fact that police found us as, as a vulnerable community and understanding that motion is vulnerable itself and a sensitive area. They found like his case, they find that this is a this is an area whereby they can go plying their trade without being checkmate. And need need for us the youth as an individual will come up with this. NGO so as to see to the cases of the police brutality and with the help of Segaling, the man that started police reform, reform police enters, we've been able to go into police stations, ask what is the issues, ask them why they've been arresting or shooting sporadically on there whereby people are going by the applying their trade peacefully on the street. You mentioned um, that Mushi is a vulnerable area. Do you have those kind of situations often in, in places like Mushi? Do you have men of um, the Nigerian police or uh, the, the FSAS harassing people in Mushi often? Yeah, of course. I can tell you cases. We've been to stations. I, I, I don't want to mention a particular police station. We have we have issues with that police station. And whenever we, we get calls, we, we've been arrested. And when we go there to solicit for bail, they ask us to pay and we ask what's their offense do you have to have a dreadlock is dreadlock a crime does having a tattoo makes you a criminal but when you look at why i said the area is vulnerable is because of the criminal activities around whereby you see boys taking in their hand but we understand that as a moonshine growing up there that has been the that has been the core but when you look at motion community as a whole you find that there are a lot of big wigs a lot of work to do from that community but the negligence and people and the and the aim of power from that community not giving back to their community has cost us a whole lot of things and a lot of damage and that has now led to a situation where you, according to you you're, you're harassed often by men of men course the FSAS. and um, have you recorded any sort of um, um, casualty in, in that process yeah we have like his mom could react two years ago where she was sitting down and a stray bullet was shot at her. She, she is from um, Mushin. Yeah. So a stray bullet was shot at her and we've been pestering. And two days ago when Coyote was shot, we felt the need that Kudriad case has not, uh, nothing has been done towards it. And another guy is shot, though he's not from my community, but looking at him as being a youth. Now, back back to the drawing board, and SARS. We keep shouting, and SARS. But there is nothing in particular. We as youth or as resident or as citizen, where it ends is on that Twitter page or social media where people say answers. But there is nothing that is being done in real life. I want to let our viewers know that you can call in um, to, to contribute to this conversation. Um, it has become a really um, different conversation because of you know Adebayo's um, um, story of, of his mom also being shot by a stray bullet from from FCS and he, he said so far they haven't gotten any any sort of justice we want to hear from you what do you think about this call for NSAS and um, nigerians you know talking about police brutality um every now and then calling to make your contribution but please be as respectful as you can just so we can get um something meaningful out of your contribution thank you as you call it um 
I want to ask you, Adebayo, why should somebody's look matter? You know, because from what we hear, you talking about people wearing dreadlock, people with tattoo. Um, why should someone's look matter as to whether you know is, is there a look for for is there a criminal look? I want, because it looks like they, they have said, look, once you're on dreadlock, you should be arrested. Is there a criminal look? Um, not really, not really. But let's to be sincere, you need to dress smart, beautiful, handsome. I think your look, your dress should determine your occupation or your profession. So if someone in the entertainment industry, for example, sure, sure. or someone who, whether you're in the entertainment industry, people who even work in the corporate in the industry and still wear their dreads, and, you know, on a particular day, you decide to go out with your dreads, should that determine how um, someone relates? Okay, we have a call, okay, it's, um, it's not a, we have a call, Comrade Henry calling from Wishing. Good morning, Comrade Henry. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming on Super Journal. Yes. What's your contribution? I, I'm speaking, I wanted to speak with the, the, your work. Please, how can, how can we collaborate? You see, this is a human rights uh, officer uh, speaking with you. How, how can we have a good collaboration with your institution? And how can I get your address? I'm going number. Okay, um, Comrade Harris, okay. so, someone um, right now will take your phone number. And then um, okay. if you, you can also call us, this program will end um, by, oh no, before 10. If you can call us okay. after this program, then we'll have a better conversation with you. We can have that okay. on there, but call okay. us after this program. We'll, we'll have the conversation thank you with you. Much. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, um, you were saying something about the yes. look and how... No, the, yes, your look, sometimes it matters, but that doesn't lead to harassment. If you see this SAS, when they dress, they put on dreadlock. Even they put on beers, they look ranty. They don't look accommodative at all. Even when you said they are robbery, you think they are robbers. They said they are this guy just to arrest a criminal. But that doesn't matter. So far, I can identify myself to you to be a good person. I just feel like putting on, like on my normal dressing. If I'm out of work, I love putting on shorts and sometimes singlet. That's where I dress after anything on official. So I believe. If I can introduce or tell you more about myself, you don't need to harass me based on my dressing. But normally, mushi, mushi, we know mushi to be. <laughs> uh, uh, well, let, let's hear from you. I mean, should it matter? Because it looks like um, once you're undressed, like we said earlier, or you look in, you, you dress a particular way, then you're going to be, once you are with a laptop bag or you're with a bag, you're also going to be harassed. And people also talk about how um, they've asked to, their phone to be checked. And you know, once you, you say, no, you don't have a right to check my phone, then you're in trouble. I mean, what does all of this mean? Uh, like I've said, what? Well, the look most times determines who you are, but most often doesn't. Like you said, if you're in the entertainment industry, do you have to be on dread? I could decide as it is to be on, on dread. I could decide to have tattoo. It's my body. It's who my womb or I want anybody to see me. But wh whenever you come to me as a police officer, on the, under the law to protect a normal citizen. What you should ask is, having a bag doesn't call you a criminal, but we understand the sensitivity of what goes on around our community as, and as a country as a whole, whereby people put things, dangerous objects in, in the bag. But when someone can at least identify him or herself, you need to let go instead of extorting that person. We've had issues of extortion all around machine, whereby people will just call us. You can't even be, a, okay, I could tell you a story. A guy was, they were at the front of the house. There wasn't light in the, in the room and they came out. And those, those federal stars just parked at their front and picked all of them up. But because of the likes of Rugged Man, Sega Link, we were able to get them released immediately that midnight and they were brought back to their home. So, but for how long do we want to take this? Fine, we understand motion is, like I said, is vulnerable. But that vulnerability doesn't mean all of us there in that community are not law abiding. And as it is, that community is a law abiding community. Either you take it or not. I, I, I want to be quote anyway. There is no there is no way you see an ordinary motion fighting against the policeman. No way. Not until when you see them harassing people, extorting them on their ways. Even when you're selling something, they come give me money. I've seen cases like that, but like I said, it boils down to poverty. When a, when a, when a normal policeman who does not have a, an ordinary income 
an income to sustain his family what does it do so some people will agree with you that that was that might be part of it but that it might actually also go beyond that because um we know that recently the, the federal government increased um, the, the, the salaries of police officers and yes we're still having this situation no, I, I don't think is has it been implemented um, there's an increase whether it has been implemented or not yes. even before but, that even before that people will tell you that look all of this has been happening for a while no, this, let me, this is not the first time it's happened are you also subscribing to the fact that this is about poverty it's poverty I'm a transit operator I'm very proud to be that so that's what I do after my I teach also a computer instructor part time but I, I have a pack. I'm the executive of that pack. So every Friday, they come. You pay police, even on the police station, even SAS will come. That you have to pay them maybe 500. They might come like four, to invest, four vehicles. They go to each, each pack. They can quote me. They pay go each, each, each pack, tricycle pack, motor pack. You have to pay them. Some will come on Friday, some will come on Wednesday, some will come on Monday. Even SAS do, they will come with their own bus. You pay them for 5K or 1K. So imagine when you have four uh, vehicle, police vehicle van, one day you pay them for 500 or 1,000 for that day, and that set will come the next day. Most of them, they don't live on their salary, they live on what they exhaust, what they exhaust from people. I can tell you that. So if it, it looks like Nigerians are made to bear the brunt of um, whatever um, it is you are going through, in their own offices that yeah, Nigerians yeah. have to it's only on. Nigerian police I know they did not experience uh, we, have, we have a call from uh, Ojolowa good morning good morning good morning what's your contribution and uh, my contribution is if they are compared with what we all did those are our police we're not supposed to handle the call just to keep them in the top input like a uh, what I can call it, y'all. To be using, not to be using a call. Kind of call going about some people over. You don't carry God. That's my own concern. All right, thank you so much for calling in. You, you know, when you look at when we had, when we started having series of calls, uh motion to the world decided to have a court to, to give a court civic seat to all police stations around we get we, we sent out letters and only one one station one dp was al allowed us and he gave us reasons and we we had a good conversation but the rest like the one the most the one that i stopped a lot Most. would not come in whenever they see us either doing our car on our cap or sees our idol tell her you you guys are here again <laughs> but all you're telling them is this police brutality or extortion has to stop it doesn't have to be you going on your road being afraid of police and when you see when you tell your friend i'm coming to Mujibia, hope i'm safe not because of the area but because of the police mainly i mean when we were, when we were growing up um, um, when you see police officers you there's a certain level of you know confidence you have to move around that area because you believe that you have you know security <laughs> it's almost like that that feeling you have when daddy's home you know there's protection for you okay. um, but now it almost looks like nigerians are afraid when they see police officers they say police van it, it, there's that feeling of fear most nigerians say they have that feeling of fear of what is going to happen will i get home safely will i be arrested <laughs> um if do you think that this call to end SARS would bring about the change that we actually need in the police uh, uh, force mm, i believe it will if the present nurse can just do something beautiful within this short period they have because we will shout answers 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 and like i said with one of my colleagues that this was not the first my mom was not the first case this is not the first case but thanks to sega and them chidi even chidi TD, okay, okay, is a media influencer on social media, has been one, we went to the station together, started this hashtag and makes this stuff to trend, even when Al Jazeera, when the uh, Yomisho Gule was even lying that it wasn't the gunshot from the police, a whole PPRO spokesman. And when you talk, he will block you on the media. If not for social media, they're just setting in this dicking, many lives has been lost to this cause. But I think now we can also come together and work as a team. 
the nurse should just do this. You see that is crap. Because I don't believe in reform. They said they reform, they now name them anti courtism squad. Still the same thing. They still put on the same jacket, put on the same dreadlock, the same look. And the best security I can see for now, if you want to engage, you have a function. Nigerian uh, force, Nigerian military, you are more comfortable, more confidence in them than this SAS. Well, even if it's crap SAS, um, there are many other squads in, in the police force. For example, the Nigerian police have said it is not SAS, it's not the bullet from SAS that killed um, uh, Kolade Johnson, that is a bullet from the special anti cultism squad, the SAS. So even if you end SAS, there are other you know, anti um, crime squad. I, I think that, so are, you, are we going to start calling for? Um, an end to every one of them. What is the holistic approach to this? I'm sure you What do you think is a holistic approach? I think the holistic approach is scrubbing that entity, that SAC, SAS, going back to the, to the drawing board, reforming the Nigerian police. An ordinary Nigerian police has to understand citizen when they are not on any kind of dangerous, with any kind of dangerous object and not someone you have to shoot and I don't understand why a policeman will always come to, to a venue or to a street happy with his guns wanting to trigger at any moment fine it's not always most often why we said SARS is because they've always been the one perpetrating those evils most often like the one of machines always by the anti squad of a station the, mainly when you see them there's always as are behind it. So everybody believes SARS. But from a particular st a particular station, they are always anti robbing spot. So they go into the street, extorting people, extorting citizens, going lawfully and abiding by the rules of the country, extorting them of their hard end money. So not until like he said, like colored like he said, not until the NAS does a big thing the the ninth one the assembly. assembly does a big thing by going back to the drawing board giving us a, a reformed nigerian police passing the bill and for, and letting the executive pass it into the law but by all police officers will be sensitized i think sensitization is what boils down not every one of them if you look at the rank and files you under, if you look at the police settings you understand the ones below are the one people have issues with but when you look at their boss you understand there's a kind of difference with that they handle people but why, why do you think that you know all of these cases because recently we also have we had to have a custom situation where um the, according to the customs uh, um, uh pro he said uh, sorry according to the customs uh, public relations officer he said it was an accidental discharge that killed um, a man along the uh, lagos ibado expressway yeah, uh, until now we have not heard anything about that situation um, you also mentioned, you know, um, your, your mom's case. Till now, we've not had anyone being apprehended in the Nigerian police. Why do you think that um, there's some sort of protection for for uh, police? All we hear is, is under investigation and no, nothing. Let me. The the problem we have is very simple. The judicial the judicial system is faulty. Is it the judicial system? I will tell you where it is faulty. I I I drive. I I took one way. The next, I believe the next for me, a police, caught by a police officer, take me to the station, file me to the court. I get to the court, I met the Lord, they charge me 25,000, I go to imprisonment. The next, immediately, I'm going to the prison. Next time, I will not perpetrate such again. Mm. Now, the case of my mom, they will tell you, like, I, I don't know the word about it. Once I had have the- you charged the case to court? Yes, yes, I had the, they, 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 went, they were in court, they dismissed them, I called the IPO in charge. I said there is no more in that department. He gave me someone else's number. I went to Panty. I met nobody. I called my lawyer also fired the same thing to now. If our judiciary system is so good that immediately they are investigating, why investigating? Dismiss them, let them go to the prison immediately. Next, doing under investigation. Then if it is they are going to die by shooting, by hanging in the next two or three days. Let let us you, know. You think that there should be speed? Okay, we have Lucky calling from um, Ali Bosho. Good morning, uh, Lucky. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Lucky. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what actually happened? No problem. What happened? No problem. Happened. What actually happened? You cannot go there. You need to do something about this. 
So people who didn't even die but sustained serious injuries and people who have been extorted and have reported the cases most of them have not gotten justice do you think that you will get justice for your mom and that um, the family of colored johnson will also get justice like i said the, judi the judicial system is faulty when there's a synergy fast and um, network between the executive offender you get to court you get executed or get punished for your for your case or your friend i think we'll get justice but you know that the court has to do with um, the court will only or the judiciary will only work with facts presented before them yes they have a, they are them. enough they have been enough facts on my mom's case same thing as colady johnson so what are they waiting for the system is still very 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 slow you see a man wrong, um, wrongly um, arrested and we spent 22 years in cell later they release him no compensation. So the problem is still the judicial system is still very, very poor. Um, as we wrap up now, um, Shreemi, how do we ensure justice for victims of, of police brutality? Uh, the only way we can ensure justice is reforming. And when, like you said, the system, I won't fault. I'm not saying the judiciary is not at fault. But when you look at the police, the sanity of the police system, whereby anybody has been accused wrongly or whereby the officer has been reported, to have done something in in a victim. What you just have to do is file it like Colady's case now. The Nigerian police force place it on on Twitter that they have arrested two people and they will be on a conventional investigation. Why are you shielding them from the public? Is it because of the family of after they have done danger or cost? So there should be a name and shame uh, situation. The, the public should know the no. officers involved no. and then, you know, for the process should be transparent. Yes. All right, thank you so much. We've been speaking with um, Shoyemi uh, Lakunle, who is the co-founder of Motion to the World, an advocacy group that focuses on the perception of, um, on the perception of Mushi. And he says that, you know, um, they have suffered a lot of police brutality um, in Mushi. Mushi is very vulnerable to police brutality. We also have um, a, a direct victim of police brutality at Gebayo Abayomi, who is a tricycle operator, and um, he is a, youth, is a youth advocate as well. And his Twitter handle is Ninja Pasito. He is um, he lost his mother to a stray bullet from the um, the federal um, anti robbery squad, and he says, we, we do um, we sincerely uh, sorry for the loss of your mom, and then also to the family of Olakuli. Um, sorry to the family of um, Kayode uh, Johnson. We also do say we, we it is a sad one we we uh, commiserate with your family and we hope that you get the justice that you deserve and that the federal government does the need for. we'll take a break now and when we return um, Olamide and i will be wrapping up the program do stay with us